In this video, we're going to explore the Python enum type, which we can use to store predefined values in an idiomatic way. And as an example, we're going to see how we can create a case insensitive enum by using the enums underscore missing method. We'll also look at the Python 3.11 string enum class, and we're finally going to look at Pydantic and how we can integrate enums with Pydantic models. So let's dive in. So this short video will explore Python enums. And this video will be something a little bit different. It's going to be a shorter, more concise video. If you'd like more of this type of video, just let me know in the comments. Now, the idea in Python is that we have an enum that can represent a predefined set of values. And enums, they are available in most programming languages. But as you can see in the documentation, they were added to Python in version 3.4. And an enum is a set of symbolic names that are bound to unique values. And you can see an example of that below. We import the enum class. And then we define a class that inherits from that enum. In this example, we have a class called color, and that consists of three member variables. We have red, we have green, and we have blue. And these variables have symbolic names, for example, red, but the value is one for red. So when you have these types of values in your code, but you don't want to refer to them just with the primitive value one, two, or three, instead you can use the enum to refer to it in a more idiomatic way that makes it more obvious what's going on in your application. Now in this video we're going to learn how to make enums case insensitive. We're going to look at the underscore missing method on an enum. We'll also see the Python 3.11 string enum class. And finally we're going to see how to use enums with Pydantic. So let's start writing some code. I'm going to go to VS Code and I have a file here called main.py. And I'm going to paste some code into this file and we're going to import the enum class from the enum module. And then let's say we have an ordering system and we have an enum here called order status. That enum contains four member variables and these represent different stages of an order. So for example, ordered, shipped, delivered or declined. So four member variables within this enum. Now below the enum definition, I'm going to add a print statement. And let's say we wanted to look at an order status of delivered. So what we need to do is we need to instantiate the enum and pass the string value that we want to actually use. And that has to be something that's available as one of the members of that enum. So I'm going to pass in delivered here. And what I'm going to do in the terminal is execute this program at the bottom. So it's going to be Python and I've called the file main.py. And you can see the output of that. We have the enum field being output here, and that's the order status dot delivered field. So these fields encapsulate a predefined set of possible values for an order status. But the values have to be case sensitive. So if I change this to a capital D and we rerun the script, you can see we're getting an error below here. Delivered is not a valid order status. So we're going to need to change this up. But let's say we have some some kind of requirement in our code. We need to accept any kind of case. So these have to be case insensitive. Now, I'm going to show an example of how you might approach this problem in Python. So the question is, how do we make an enum case insensitive? Let's go back to the Python documentation on enums. And I'm going to search for a method that's available on the enum object. And it's this method here. It's underscore missing. This is a class method that you can use for looking up values that are not found in the enum. And by default, this method will do nothing. But if you need to implement some custom search behavior in your enum, you can override this method and define the logic. And actually, the logic for our code is what's defined here. So what I'm going to do is just go back to VS Code and we're going to write this up from scratch. So let's do that now. We're going to define a class method in the enum and we need to call this underscore missing underscore. Now that takes two parameters. The first one is the class because it's a class method. It will take that as the first parameter. And the second one is the value that's coming into the enum. And this value, if we get to the missing method here, the value has not been found in any of the fields, the members that are in the enum explicitly. So the missing method allows you to kind of implement a custom search logic if you encounter a value that is not in one of these fields. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the value and I'm going to lowercase it. So let's create a variable here called value just by lowercasing the value that's passed in. What we can then do is we can actually iterate over all of the members in this enum. And we can do that with a for loop. So I'm going to say for member in class and class refers to the enum that's coming in as the first parameter here. So we can iterate over all of these members. And now that we've lowercased the value being passed in, 
What we can do is we can take each member and compare its value to the value that has been lowercase. So let's write an if statement here. If we have the member's value being equal to what we lowercase on the line above here on line 11, in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return that member. Otherwise, if we get to the end of the for loop and we've not returned a member, what we're gonna do is just return none. And that's because the value that's been lowercase after that lowercase operation and after that comparison, we've not found a member, so we're just gonna return none. And this is actually all the code we need for a case insensitive enum in Python, just by overriding the underscore missing class method. Let's now go down here and I'm gonna add a couple of extra imports here, a couple of extra print statements, sorry. And I'm gonna change the casing of some of this. So let's add one in all capitals, one with a title case. And I'm gonna test this out with one of the other statuses, that's the ordered status. So let's add two more prints below. And now once we've added those print statements, we can actually execute the program. And you can see we actually get back the enum members now. So even though we're passing in values that don't match exactly the values for our enum members, we're actually getting back the correct member because we've now added this underscore missing method that's gonna perform the lower casing and then the equality search. Now there is one small optimization that we can make here, but we need to be using Python 3.11 in order to do that. Now I'm gonna to go to the documentation for the enum module and I'm gonna search again and this time we're gonna look for the string enum class that's been added. So we've got that here. We have a class called string enum available in the enum module. And this is exactly the same as an enum, but the members are also strings. Now the small distinction here is that we have the members being printed out here, but the actual value, the underlying value for these members, which is the string values here, you have to call dot value in order to access that. So for example, to get the underlying string value, I would need to call dot value on the enum member. And when we rerun that, you can see at the top, we actually get the string value represented by that member. What we can do in Python 3.11 is we can import the string enum. So I'm gonna do that right at the top here. And then we can subclass that instead of the enum itself. And what we can do then is change this line of code rather than looking at member.value because the member is a string itself, we can actually get rid of dot value here and we can just do the comparison against the member itself. And I can also get rid of the dot value that I just added here below. And let's rerun the application and you can see that this time we get back the actual strings that are represented by each member. So the very small distinction here is that the string enum, its members are actually strings themselves and therefore we can reference those values and use string methods on them just as we would with any other string. And before we move on, as well as string enum, the enum module also comes with the int enum that you can use and the member variables are gonna be integers. Let's move on to the final example of this short video. We're gonna see how to use an enum with Pydantic. So what I'm gonna do is activate a virtual environment with Pydantic installed. And you can see that's been activated now. If you need to install Pydantic, you can use pip install Pydantic in order to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this enum here that represents an order status. And we're going to create a Pydantic model that uses that order status. So from Pydantic at the top, I'm going to import the Pydantic base model class. And then we're gonna define a model called order that inherits from the base model. So this is a Pydantic model. And let's say within that order, for example, we have a user and we're just going to make that a string. And we also have a status. And the status field, we want to limit that to one of the order status options. And I'm actually just gonna move this uh, Pydantic model below the order status here, just so that it picks up that in VS Code. So we have an order status and we are setting the status of the Pydantic model to one of the values in that enum. So just below that, what I'm gonna do is get rid of these print statements and I'm gonna add an order variable here and we're going to instantiate the order Pydantic model. I'm gonna create an instance of that and we're gonna pass a user of John Doe and we're gonna pass a status here and let's say we're passing the status delivered. Now the status is delivered with a capital D, it's in title case. That does not match the casing on the delivered member but because of the underscore missing method, this is actually going to be allowed and it's gonna convert it to the correct member. So let's test this out by printing out the order to the terminal and then we're going to run the script again. It's python main.py. And when we run that, we get back the Pydantic model that contains the username of John Doe and it contains that order status of delivered. 
and we can change this status to any crazy looking casing that we want. So if we have alternating capitals and lowercase letters, that is still going to work because of our underscore missing method. Now, of course, if we control the status that's being passed into this order, then we should use our enum. So I'm going to use the order status enum and we can actually access the member directly. So let's say order status dot delivered. So if we have control of that and we are controlling the values that are passed into the order, we can actually refer to these directly. When we run this script at the bottom, that's still going to print out the same uh, status as before. And I mentioned this because of course, sometimes a client is sending data. So for example, a client might send that crazy string here. We don't control that. We don't know what member that is. We're just passing it into the Pydantic model and the model will then validate that against the type that is in this particular model for that field. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. We've defined a case insensitive enum in this video by overriding the underscore missing method and implementing our search logic here. And in any circumstance where you are doing a lookup in an enum and you want to define some kind of search logic, the underscore missing method can be useful for that. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.